Hey everybody, uh, my name is Toby Sterrett. I'm director of UX at Simple. Um, we're located in beautiful Portland, Oregon. And what we're trying to do basically is build the best personal banking experience possible um, so our customers can just get better control over their finances. Um, I almost didn't really end up here, and, and I don't mean because you know I overslept because of jet lag or anything like that, although that's kind of true. Um, I slept most of the time I've been here. Uh, mostly because I've never really had any formal banking you know, training or experience. I've actually kind of hated money my whole life and, and really tried to avoid managing my finances as much as possible. Um, so how did I end up here? Well, I, I mostly just really love making stuff. Um, you know, during high school, I basically just made zines and skateboarded. That's pretty much what I did. Um, I would do things like, you know, cut out my little brother's picture from our family's photos and put it on heavy metal, you know, band pictures. Um, in, in case my skills are too good, that's him. You know, cut that out and glued it on, did some Xeroxing. Uh, but then I started seeing things like this in, in some of the zines that were around, and it was super fancy, you know, like these really cool borders and this, uh, this you know, logo that was white on top of black that seemed like magic to me. I didn't know how to do that with a photocopier, and, and I kind of realized, oh, I need to learn how to use computers. So I convinced my parents I needed a computer to, you know, to write papers for college, um, but immediately started trying to figure out how to use Photoshop and things like that. Uh, that led to me, um, you know, changing my major from environmental engineering to graphic design. Uh, I transferred to, to Pratt in New York, went there for about a year. Um, you know, that didn't really work out. I ended up being an art school dropout, um, moved back home, and started working for a really small agency just doing logos and brochures and things like that. Um, one day, my boss came in and, and, you know, put this box on my desk and said, we're going to start making websites. And I was like, cool, I'm, I made some websites for my band. Um, you know, I, I kind of know how to do this. And we just started making websites and, um, you know, drag and drop, all that type of stuff. Um, but from then on, I mean, that's pretty much all I've done is just build and design websites. Um, and, you know, similar to the zines and things, I really liked just making things that I wanted to kind of see in the world and I wanted to use myself. Um, this was a site I made back in 2002. It was um, one of the first kind of user-generated content sites for for listing punk shows and things like that. You know, a band could come and say, oh, I got these shows coming up. Instead of having to go get flyers at the record store, I could just, you know, pull up the website and just see all the shows that were coming up. Um, and it was a really fun experience just kind of building something that I really wanted to see um, and I wanted to use myself. Similar example, uh, I was going to a church at the time playing drums and um, we had no way to kind of manage ourselves. We didn't know, you know, who was doing what. And it was because they were Mac-based and there was no good software for, um, for churches to use on the Mac. This is uh, a really, um, <laughs> this is actually taken off the website of a company that makes church management software uh, this year. I mean, it still looks like this. It looks like Windows 3.1, um, you know, it's, it's garbage. So I decided, hey, this is something I could uh, use the internet for and, and start making something myself. And uh, it turned into this huge site that would let people um, organize all their, uh, the people that were members of the church, all the events that were coming up, um, tithing, all that type of stuff. Um, so, you know, it's another one of those things where I just really enjoyed making stuff that I wanted to use myself. Um, after freelancing for about seven years, I got the opportunity to join a startup up in San Francisco called PowerSet. Uh, they were working on some really kind of cool um, natural language search technologies. And it did some fun stuff, like you could ask, you know, what did Tex Texaco acquire? And it would answer things like Texaco purchased or, you know, uh, Texaco bought. And it just kind of, it, it understood the actual meaning of the text that was underneath versus just looking at keywords like normal search does. Um, we also did things like you could search for Metallica albums. We'd actually list it out using structured data, did some disambiguation work. And uh, we did one of the uh, many, um, uh, what was that, like... <laughs> redesigns of the Wikipedia page that we, nobody asked for. We just kind of decided to do it ourselves. But it did some fun stuff. You could search within the article. Um, you know, we, we added a lot of tools and things like that. Um, but one of the things I realized is, like, I, I don't really care about search. This isn't something that I really yearn to use myself. Um, and we ended up getting bought by Microsoft uh, to work on Bing. And, you know, after working there for a couple of years, I decided it was time to do something new. Um, you know, I just I didn't really care about search. So that's when, uh, when Bank Simple came up. Um, after working at PowerSet for a couple of years, a few of the folks there were going to be working at Bank Simple and trying to build this bank from the ground up. Um, but I, I wasn't really interested. I mean, to start, I had a credit union, which in the States, that's kind of the answer to big banks is, you know, it's a community-owned 
um, nonprofit, you know, banking institution, and I had been using a credit union for 20 years. So I didn't really have much interest in, you know, trying to use banks. I mean, I already had the solution. Um, you know, uh, they treated me well, and there was no fees and things like that. And besides, I mean, how the hell are we going to compete with banks? I mean, a startup trying to go after some of the most uh, you know, well-funded and ruthless competitors in the world didn't seem like a, a very fun challenge. Um, a couple of years ago, I was at the XOXO conference, and I saw Marco Arment give a talk about how he was going to um, challenge himself and introduce a new product um, into a crowded market space, uh, and it was going to be a podcasting app. And he showed this slide showing that, I mean, look, there's already like 15 podcast apps out there, but you know, I'm going to take this challenge on and try to see if I can make the best one. So I decided to do the same thing for banking, and there's tons and tons of banking apps on the App Store. And you know, there we are uh, in this kind of ocean of icons. Uh, but the thing about this is, I mean, that's just the first page. Um, it goes on and on and on. There's just thousands of banking apps on the App Store. So I mean, that seemed like a pretty intimidating project to take on. Uh, but, but what Bank Simple offered that no one else did was uh, that it was a chance to build something from the ground up. It was something where you know, I could go and help actually kind of define what this project was and what it was going to be and um, you know, build it from, from the ground up. So we started. Uh, we, you know, this is probably the most hipster photo you'll see. This is back in 2010 on Instagram, uh, drawing out some sketches on a chalkboard made out of an IKEA tabletop in a San Francisco loft. Um, but you know, that's what we did. Started sketching things out, um, working on the marketing site. Started just kind of making some comps, tightening things up. Um, basically, we were trying to figure out what our product was going to be by making the marketing site and kind of defining, like, well, here's what we're going to offer after we build it. Um, we had a lot of feedback from people on Twitter and things like that, saying, like, you know, I really want to use your product because Chase is charging me thousands of dollars in fees. Um, we did some fun stuff, like a, a sign-up form for the, um, the waiting list that kind of looked like a letter to us. If you tried to put a script tag, we'd show you know, a troll face, things like that. Um, we did some you know, uh, dynamically generated uh, canvas graphics in the background back in 2010. It was kind of fun. Um, you know, but it's, it's, it's a marketing site. It's not really a product yet. But I think the thing that was good about this was that it really defined um, the fact that you know, we as developers could also work on the design. I mean, we asked um, for permission to kind of like give this a go and see if we could design the app instead of just building it and everything worked out really well. We had a, um, a good you know, team cohesion. Um, but I think the most important thing is it led to this kind of concept of, of eating our own dog food. Um, after working on the marketing site and kind of defining what we were going to build, I got really excited about wanting to use this bank myself. I mean, I, I kind of realized this is something that is definitely necessary in, in my life, and it's something I'm really excited to, to build so I can use it. So the, the concept of dog food, and according to Wikipedia, is it's a way for a company to demonstrate confidence in its own products, and the idea is that if the company expects customers to, to buy its products, it should also be willing to use those products themselves. Um, the legend has it that it came from, from this advertisement, Lauren Green from the 70s. Um, he was the spokesperson for Alpo Dog Food, and he claimed that he actually fed Alpo to his own dog, which you know, was a, a big you know, leap of faith for him, um, because you know, he's, he's not just selling it, he's also using it for his own dog. To take things even further, the, uh, supposedly the CEO of CalCan Dog Food um, believed in their product so much that he would eat a can of their own dog food at every board meeting, which, if you've ever looked at dog food, that's pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> um, it's, it's, you know, that, that's some real faith in your product. Um, in, in technology, it kind of got popularized by Microsoft when they were building uh, Windows NT. Uh, apparently, they were actually using a nightly build of NT to continue working on the next iteration. So, one of the things that was interesting about that is that you know, the immediate feedback of the code breaking the build resulted in this loss of pride, um, and you know, they really had to just hunker down and fix bugs and keep things going so they can continue to work. Um, and you know, it was a very powerful motivator. So you know, Simple was kind of along the same lines. You know, we were building this bank that we wanted to use ourselves. Um, but instead of thinking of it like this, though, you know, this kind of gross, gelatinous meat stuff, I prefer to think of it more like this. You know, uh, some, some really nice doggy cupcakes that we're just kind of stressed out to try to get. Um, but it's, it's, it's also a, a pretty big undertaking because banking is um, it's, it's a really kind of high stress thing. You know, you search for stressed out by money and everybody's pulling their hair out and doing all that type of stuff. Um, you know, banking is, is a huge portion of people's lives and a, a big part of, you know, stress. Money is, is a huge thing that um, people worry about. So uh, to kind of illustrate 
the idea of, of eating your own dog food. Um, I'm gonna show you some, some videos from a person who made a, a, a new table saw. Um, if you know anything about table saws, this is pretty much what they do to people's hands all the time, right? They'll just cut through flesh like it's nothing, right? So this guy you know, worked on making a table saw that was, it would be impossible to cut yourself on. And to, to kind of develop it and demo it, he would use a hot dog instead of his thumb to show what was going on and what would happen when a thumb would come into contact with uh, the blade. Yes, right. we're going to use a salty, wet, conductive, all beef frank. And so I'll hold it just like it was my thumb. You gotta be kidding me. Let's see. There's nothing. It is. That is amazing. That really is. I mean, that's a. Uh, it's like nothing ever happened. So, I mean, that's a pretty awesome demo, right? I mean, drops, the hot dog is fine, but it's, it's a demo, right? It's, it's, this is kind of like what it's normally like when you're building something, but you're not actually using it for yourself. Um, so he decided to take things a bit further and actually, you know, use his own fingers. <laughs> you all right? Yep. There's no blood. There's nothing. No? Nope. Didn't hurt. <laughs> This is a man who has faith in his creation. So, so talk about having faith in your own creation. I mean, that guy could have lost his whole finger um, during this demo, right? So, you know, banking, while it's very important, I'm not going to lose my finger actually using this, this product that we're building, right? But, you know, it's, it's, still, it's still pretty high stakes. I mean, like, I need to pay my mortgage or else I'm going to get kicked out of my house, and the bank has to work for all these types of things. So we set out to start building this bank, and we started thinking about, you know, what, what do we need from our bank? What do we want? Um, I just wanted some basic things like, you know, personal finance, finance management stuff. Like, I don't want to have to use Mint or Quicken or something like that just to know where my money's going. Um, I wanted, you know, instant access to just all of my transactions for all time. I mean, I, I, at my old bank, I had to download um, statements so I could see what happened six months ago, and, and I thought that was bullshit. Um, I wanted a mobile app, you know, because my bank didn't even have a mobile app. And I wanted to be able to contact customer service via text instead of phones, because I, I hate using the phone. I don't know about you guys, but I think it sucks. So, uh, but I think the biggest thing we wanted to do was, was build a bank for the way people think, not the way it actually works. Because after seeing the way banking works under the covers, it's a huge clusterfuck. And the, most banks just say, like, well, this is the way it works. Here's the interface on top of it. Kind of like when you take a database and just have the form look exactly like what the fields are. Um, that's what most banks do, and we wanted to not do that. An example of that, you know, when a transaction comes through, it usually just looks like this, uh, just really ugly, minimal information. But you get a lot of information when you actually like, use your card. So we wanted to just start designing things and, and figure out ways of just having more information available. I mean, I, I designed this at my wife's grandma's house during Christmas break a few years back, just trying things out, um, seeing what the interface could look like, and just kept iterating, cleaning things up, removing things, you know, uh, making it more along the lines of what we needed. And this is where we are right now. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of stuck to the original vision, gone through tons and tons of iteration, um, and we try to provide a lot of really nice tools. So every time a transaction comes through, you can actually edit and change things, add memos, you can um, change the category, you can, you know, have hashtags, things like that. Um, you can spend it from different goals and budgets and whatnot. So. Um, we really try to make it so people can, can really customize their finances and, and keep track of where everything's going. And when you have all that information, you can do a lot of stuff with search. So you can do things like, you know, food this month, and it'll search for everything that has happened this month that's in a category of restaurants or, or coffee or anything like that. Um, you can even say in Charleston, and it, you know, uh, filters it even further. So you can, you can really kind of slice and dice all of your transactions and, and get lots of really good information out of it. Um, you can also save searches, so you, I really want to pay attention to how much I've spent on food every month, so I just have this running total, and every time I log in, it says this is how much I've spent on food. And you can get you know, the normal like, uh, charts and graphs and see where all your money's going um, and see what your trends are, things like that. Um, and that's all you know, part of our bank. I don't have to use something like Mint or whatever. Um, so, you know, after spending money, we have all these tools, but we really wanted to also encourage people to save money, and we created a feature named Goals. And what this does is it lets people take all the money they have in their account and kind of put it into um, separate little buckets. And you can save money over time. You can save for things like um, you know, uh, dinners out or something like a, um, a rainy day fund, emergency fund, things like that. 
And I use the heck out of this. I mean, I have all my money divided up into all the places it's going to go for different bills, um, you know, uh, different savings goals, all this type of stuff. And you can do things like, you know, um, after Christmas happens and January comes around, I say, I want to have $1,000 for next Christmas. And it just starts setting aside $3 every day. I don't even notice it. You know, it's less than a cup of coffee. Um, but when the end of November comes around, I have $1,000 ready to spend on Christmas. And, you know, it's very effortless. Um, and you can also have budgets for things like food. So every time I go and spend money at a restaurant, um, I just say, cool, it comes out of this budget and it's all just part of my bank. And, um, you know, it's, it's really easy to keep track of where all my money's going. And this lets us do something called safe to spend. So this is one of the, uh, the features we have that we noticed, um, you know, whenever we were using our banks, we would go and see how much money was in our account and then kind of like mentally keep track of all the different things that we were going to have to spend money on coming up. So rent and bills and everything like that. And we'd have to kind of do this subtraction. So we're just doing it for you. And you say, here's all the money that you have set aside. You really only have $75 left. That's what's actually safe for you to spend because everything else is accounted for. And, you know, people really love this stuff. I mean, this is a feature we built for ourselves just to kind of, like, organize our money. But people are saying things like, this is the first time in their lives they've ever actually saved money themselves. Um, lots of people say it's actually changed their lives. And it's kind of cool seeing things like this, where uh, this person saved up to, to buy a, um, an engagement ring instead of putting it on a credit card and going into debt. Um, and this guy paid off $20,000 in nine months just by using some, some uh, simple budgeting techniques with our, our goals feature. So seeing stuff like that um, is pretty awesome after we kind of just built it for ourselves. And of course, mobile, um, you know, just kind of started doing some iterations here, um, trying to make it so that, you know, you could use everything you need to do on the go. Um, it was iOS 6 when we first built it, so the skeuomorphism is, is you know, it was really cool. Now it's a lot cleaner. Um, but, you know, you can add photos when you're on the go. You can uh, contact support just by, like, sending an email or a text. You can keep track of all your goals, and you can send money to other simple customers instantly. So one of the things that has really been a driving force for us when we're building all this stuff is to really try to sweat the details and, and um, you know, try to sneak in as many delightful things as we can as we're building. Uh, I, Frank Camaro put it really nicely when he said, to, to delight someone is to give them a small lesson in seeing the world as something good. It's design superpower, and we really try to take advantage of that superpower whenever possible. Um, you've probably seen the site Little Big Details. They, they kind of showcase a lot of these little, just kind of clever things. Like on Yelp, you can actually search for the emoji for a wine glass, and it searches for all the um, places that sell wine. Same thing with cars. Just cool stuff like that. Um, or the way Tweetbot kind of took that pattern of always wanting to attach the last photo you took and just make it a button and make it a lot easier to start doing that you know, pattern in your tweets. Or in the Mailbox app, whenever you hold down the command key, everything turns to um, the corresponding number that can turn into a key command. Just nice little things like that um, make a huge difference. And you know, we try to sneak these things in a lot, and, and people notice it. Um, one of the things is you know, we, we try to keep your transactions in the order when you actually use your card versus when it clears. You know, normally, when you look at your bank account, um, everything's out of order because things clear at different times, but we want to keep it in uh, you know, kind of like a, a linear um, fashion, so it's kind of like a timeline of, of your spending that you remember and it makes sense. We also send you a push notification as soon as your card is swiped. And it comes basically instantly. So it's kind of this, this really neat interaction where it feels like there's almost this physical um, relationship between your card getting swiped and it showing up on your phone. It just happens in seconds, and it feels like it's connected almost. It's almost kind of magic. And we also estimate tips. So we um, add a 20% tip, um, which is pretty standard in the States. And it makes it so people can you know, not even have to think about using some crappy tip calculator or something like that. It's just included in the push notification that you get seconds later. One of the other things, um, you know, with n most of the big banks, when you sign into your mobile app, you have to put in your password every single time. And you know, that, that's a huge pain in the ass, because if you want to be safe, you use a really big password. But if you want to use it on your phone, you have to sit there and type it out every single time you want to check your balance. And that either makes you not have a good password, or you just never use the app. So um, from the very beginning, we wanted to make sure that you could get into the app just by using a four-digit PIN, um, which was very convenient. But as soon as Touch ID came out, we added that um, on day one, because that was something that we always wanted for ourselves. It was just like, man, I can unlock my phone using Touch ID. You know, if Apple lets us do this for our app, that's going to be so much better. And so we did that, and, and people love that stuff. You know, it's, it's like magic. It just feels right. Um, and that's something that you know, we just wanted it for ourselves. But it's something that everybody else was yearning for. Same thing with um, 
using those passwords when you do have to enter it, you know, let's encourage the use of something like 1Password so you can do it without uh, having to like, go and type in all this junk. And speaking of tips, um, you know, early on we figured out that we could kind of extract out how much we did tip uh, just by doing some simple, um, some simple subtraction. So we started extracting out how much you tipped and what the percentage was, and it's, it's kind of this, this cool way to see um, you know, what your behavior is as far as tips, and, and it gives you a good indication if the place you went was someplace good. If it had good service, the tip's going to be really high, and you can kind of just get this cool information. Um, we do the same thing with when you get cash back. This person liked it so much that they actually took a screenshot and put a filter on it in Instagram of, a, of an app, which I thought was kind of funny, um, just to show that we did this little thing that they noticed. Another thing, we, we try to keep track of where all of your transactions take place. And the, the thing that was kind of cool about that is, you know, uh, this, this is actually a good illustration of a road trip that I took from, from Portland down to Southern California and back again. Because every time I would stop and get gas or buy food, it would just put a little pin on the... Um, on the map, and it's kind of like a, an implicit journal of my trip that I didn't even have to check in for or anything like that. It's just by, by using my card, um, I had this, this kind of you know, journal of where I went. But sometimes the maps didn't work out, right? I mean, this is, this is probably one of the most common maps that would show up in my account, and that's because it's for Amazon.com. And, you know, yeah, Amazon's in Seattle, but I don't care. It's, it's on the Internet, you know? It's, it's not like I went to Seattle and actually purchased this stuff. So we replaced things that didn't make sense like that with these little cards that would have you know, just more um, relevant information for the user, like a way to start a return or you know, log into your account so you can see what the purchase was. And we, we try to do this for lots of different things, you know, like JetBlue and GitHub and, and you know, lots of utilities and things like that. And again, people, people just notice these things. It's not something we advertise, really. It's just a nice touch that we wanted for ourselves. And um, people see it, and they, they really love that type of uh, just attention. Um, same with hashtags, you know, we added hashtags and it just gives people a way to organize their transactions and just, you know, be able to have better, um, a better look back at where their money was going in, in any sort of kind of um, method that they want to use. Um, one of the things that we did was kind of cool about it was we try to suggest the right tags. So because this is a restaurant and it took place at 1148, which is around lunchtime, we automatically suggest lunch because it's probably a lunch transaction. And sometimes it's just, you know, really kind of funny stuff. Um, this is uh, when you can reset your pin. If you try to use one, two, three, four, it just says pin is ridiculous, right? It's, it's just a, an, error, an error copy that I think one of our developers put in because it was kind of funny and we just left it. And, you know, pe people love this stuff. I mean, this person's saying they thought it, they think it's the best error copy they've ever seen just because it's, it's a little bit, you know, more human. It's not just like this sterile bank. It's, you know, it's saying, come on, man, that's a ridiculous pin. Don't use that. And sometimes it's just really weird stuff. Like, I didn't even know this was happening. Um, but if you hover on the first element in one of our menus, it perfectly aligns with the bar that's underneath it. And this guy actually noticed it and took a screenshot of it and put it on Twitter saying, like, you know, this is, this is super satisfying. I was like, sweet, yeah, we totally meant to do that. <laughs> um, but I think our, our biggest feature that, that we built was our customer relations um, feature, which is basically, it's people. Um, we, we kind of built up this team of just these amazing folks that just want to help people, and we give them the capability of just, you know, um, being human and, and working with people to solve problems. And it's, it's really common to see people say that Simple provides the best customer service they've ever experienced, which is kind of crazy coming from a bank. Um, and I think it's because we, we let them do things like send animated GIFs and support messages and uh, do things like, um, you know, send stickers and, and handwritten notes uh, handwritten birthday cards, things like that. Um, it's just a very human experience. And, you know, we also get a lot of our feedback from our customers through our customer relations team. And everybody on the customer relations team has access to our internal GitHub, and they can all write a ticket whenever something comes up saying, like, hey, you know, this person's having this problem, or I think this type of feature would help, you know, kind of make some of these things easier. And we have hundreds and hundreds of these tickets of things that we're just trying to figure out what's the next thing to work on. So that kind of takes me to, you know, how do we go beyond the dog food? Um, we've, been, we've been building for ourselves for a li really long time, and it's, you know, it's gotten to be this product that a lot of people love, and um, you know, that's kind of just part of us building for ourselves, and there's lots of other people out there who are like us. Um, but you know, there's always, there always comes this time when, when a lot of people say, like, man, did do the people who work for this company even use the product? Um, you know, I think it's very apparent that, that 
most people that use or that work at Twitter probably use the product, but not really at LinkedIn. I mean, I, I hate LinkedIn, right? And it's you know, I, I can't really imagine that people who work for LinkedIn actually use their product because it, you know, I don't like getting spam, and that's all they do is send me spam, right? Like, if you work there, do you really want to put up with this stuff? But you know. It goes beyond that because while dog fooding is important, like this guy says, it in no way replaces external user feedback, thoughts, and criticism. And that's really true because much of what was designed when um, everything I showed you for the, um, the simple product, most of it was designed when this was the team, which, you know, there's, there's a common theme here. It's just a bunch of tech dudes, right? And not much variety. Um, this is more like what the company looks like now. I mean, we're up to almost 200 people. Um, and we decided to you know, start going beyond just the developers and start getting a lot of feedback from, uh, from people outside of the development team. So we decided to start with our own in internal employees. Um, you know, we have a, a really wide variety of folks working there now, and we started something called uh, Product Office Hours, and the theme was this. We're ready to believe you. We basically just wanted people to come in and tell us their stories about finances and how they just, you know, how they live with money. And our big goal was to just shut up and listen so we could actually like learn from them and, you know, kind of get the why behind the what, you know, we, we, there was lots of things that they would tell us they were doing, lots of different, um, you know, approaches to money, things like that. But we were trying to figure out, okay, well, why are they doing this? What's the, what's the underlying meaning? What's the core problem that they're trying to solve? Uh, we were expecting probably like four or five people to, to take us up on, on coming and talking with us, but it ended up being like over 40 people. And we had some really great conversations um, with lots of folks, just lots of different varied um, approaches to money and just you know, the way they, they live with their finances. And we started extracting things that were really common, like lots of people were trying to, to do budgeting, lots of people wanted to do budgeting. Some people had it really figured out, some people were scared of it, things like that. Um, we, we extracted it out into lots of different themes. We did one of the, the rainbow spreadsheets and kind of just tried to look for patterns. We started you know, extracting some uh, proto personas, all that type of stuff. Um, and you know, like this says here in the book Talking to Humans, it's the customer's job to explain their behaviors, goals, and challenges, but it's up to the product designer uh, to come up with the best solutions. And that's kind of what we're trying to do now. We're, we're learning the way people are actually using our product or, or the things that they're trying to accomplish and trying to come up with ways that will actually you know, start addressing those problems. Uh, we just had a recent hack day. One of the things that we added to our goals feature was that you know, we learned from a lot of people that they were using these goals as, as budgets. You know, they were saying, I want to set aside $400 a month for food, and every time a transaction comes through, I have to go through and spend from it, and you know, it's this really manual process. So during, during the hack week, we, um, we made it so that you could add a category to a goal, and then every time a transaction comes through that's within that category, it automatically spends it from that goal. So it re removes a whole bunch of manual steps. And that was just done in a couple days, but you know, it's something that we, we implemented because we learned from our users that that was something that you know, was causing a lot of friction. And that's just you know, something that came from our group of 200 folks. Um, but you know, we have over 100,000 customers. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people out there that we can start talking to to learn uh, you know, how they're using the product and what they're struggling with and um, you know, what's working well, and things like that. And you know, we're starting to talk to folks. Like this is a dude in Texas that we talked to just over um, you know, Skype. Uh, he was just telling us lots of things about the way he uh, used money with his wife and, and how they kind of you know, ignored their money until there was a problem and, and that's when they actually started paying attention. It's like, man, that's a lot of really interesting insights. You know, how can we start building that into the product that we're building? So, you know, we're always going to be building the, the bank of our dreams. We're still going to be customers, and we still want to use what we're building. Um, you know, it's, it's very much at the core of what our company is. Um, but, you know, moving forward, we're hoping that dog food is just going to be part of a more, more balanced diet, and, uh, you know, the product's going to become a lot better from that. So thank you very much.